Hello and welcome to Book and Loop where happiness is handmade and the best boyfriends are always found in books. So today is a little bit of a special video because we will be doing a crafting video. Um, so I have just finished filming the entirety of this craft tutorial and I have the finished products here to show you guys. I actually did it as a class at the library um, and I just fell in love with how they came out and so I wanted to make my own set to kind of have at home too. Um, to give to my family members um, for Christmas and the holidays. So what we'll be making are these super cute little Cricut winter luminary mason jars. Um, and they're super fun and super easy to make. I have two different ones that I made today. Um, and you guys are going to get to watch me make both of them. Um, it's a pretty easy process. I think they come out super cute. Um, you can kind of customize them to be whatever it is that you want them to be. So this one has, I'm totally blocking my whole face. This one has a little snowman on it um, and it's with a white paint. Um, and then I also have this brown one that has a cute little reindeer on it as well. Um, and these jars are super cute. They're super fun. Um, they're a really easy project even for a Cricut beginner to do. Um, so I think that they will be a real fun project for you guys. So I do have my painting outfit on. Um, I hope it doesn't make you guys feel too sick. These are pajamas that I normally paint in as well as an old t-shirt that I didn't really mind if I got paint on, um, which I didn't get paint on it um, for the most part, except for like this spot here. So I apologize that my outfit is not up to my normal standards, um, but this is my painting outfit. <laughs> Since we're going to be painting, I figured I might as well wear it. I have a uh, orange tablecloth that I'm going to be laying out on my bed so you will see that in the next clip um so just to protect my, my bed so that I don't get any paint on it so I'll be having my Cricut Joy do the cutout for me um because it's so nice and small and compact and I can easily bring it down here for you guys um so yeah so I'm super excited I think these projects are super cute I think you guys are gonna like it so without further ado let's jump into it So I have all my materials that I can think of that I think I will need to do this project. I have my little tablecloth spread out so that I don't get any paint on my bed because I didn't want to do that. And I'm wearing my painting pajamas like I said before um, so that if I drip any paint on myself um, it'll just be on myself. I have my flat surface for painting purposes. Um, I have my weeding tool as well as my removable vinyl. I'm going to use removable because it will kind of give me an easier time peeling up the vinyl. Um, you can use permanent since it's not fully going to be curing to the jar before you peel it up. Um, but I just prefer to use removable for this project. Um, I have my two jars. I'm going to do two of them because I'm going to do one for my mom and one for my grandma. Um, and I'm going to, I got these ones at Hobby Lobby. Um, so I have two jars. And then I have my chalk paint. So it's important that you use kind of a chalk paint or um, any paint that's not like a latex based paint. Um, when you draw, when the paint dries and you go to peel up your vinyl sticker, um, you run the risk of, if it's like a latex based paint, of the paint kind of sticking to the sticker too much. And when you peel off the vinyl, it'll cause the sticker to peel up the paint. So you want to make sure that you're kind of using the right type of paint. I prefer to use the chalk paint. I feel like it gives it like a really, really like rustic kind of look to it. So I love using the chalk paint. Um... And I have it in a couple different versions. I have the Waverly chalk paint. Um, I've got it in a couple different colors because I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do my project in. Um, so I have this Waverly chalk in plaster. I have the Folk Art Home Decor chalk in Sage Blossom. And then I actually ran to Walmart this morning and got a couple different ones. Um, so these are all Waverly chalk and I got them in Ballet Slipper. Hazelnut, Ocean, and Lacquer. Um, and that's like, uh, Lacquer is like a red, the ballet slipper is like a pink. 
um the hazelnut is like a nice nutty looking brown and the ocean is like a dark blue um because this is a project that you don't necessarily have to do for just winter um you can do like a valentine's day with like a heart on it with the red or you could do um like a cute little like easter bunny with the pink um, so you could do a lot of different things with these jars, but for the purpose of this video, I will be making a winter jar. So, and then in addition to that, I also have my paintbrushes. I brought, um, three paintbrushes down because I'm doing, like I said, two different jars and I'm not sure exactly which colors I'm going to use just yet. So I have three paintbrushes and then I have my Cricut Joy as well as my phone for me to run my Cricut Joy. So the first thing I have to do is I have to go on to Cricut and I have to decide which um, image I want to go on the jar. So since my grandma loves snowman, I decided that for her jar, I'm going to be adding on a little snowman um, and then I'll probably be painting it with the plaster colored chalk paint. So I'm going to go into images and then I'm going to go um, and type in snowman and I'll kind of see what comes up. I do have filters activated. Um, so you can see I have that I want it to be a cut only and then I want it to be a single layer and this will kind of limit what I'm able to see. Um, so I'm going to kind of scroll through just see what kind of snowman they have. Um, I think this one is super cute um, with the little snowflakes. So I'm going to click to add that one but I'm going to just scroll through a little bit more and just see if there's anything else that I think is cute. Um, that I think would be good for this project. So for this kind of project. Um, it's kind of nice to have a really big image um, that's going to be a lot of dark space. Um, that way it's kind of uh, more light is able to filter through. I also think this snowman is super cute um, with his little scarf and his hat. So I'm going to pick that one too. And then once I have that all completed, um, I'm going to stop scrolling through now. I'm going to hit the bottom and hit add to canvas. So I have both my big snowman and then I also have a little snowman. The next thing that I have to do is kind of measure my jar to get an idea of how big it is. So a great quick way to do that, um, especially if you don't have a ruler, um, I'll sometimes just use my mats for the Cricut to kind of get an idea of how big of an object. So I'm probably going to make this about two and a half inches because this is just about a three and well, maybe I'll make it yeah probably two and a half so this is about a three and a half inch surface um this flat piece of the jar um so what i'm gonna do is actually make my images two and a half so that i have like a good amount of paint on either side of the jar so i'm going to go ahead and size both of these down to being a height of two and a half um and i'll do the same with this one i'll make it a height of two and a half um, I'll put them next to each other and zoom in a little bit. So I'm hoping that the snowman, I'm actually going to cut out both because I'm not sure exactly how great the snowman with the little snowflakes is going to come out. So I want to cut both just in case the cut is a little messy. Um, that way I have some options. So once I have that done, what I'm going to do is go ahead and hit make it and then cut it out on my Cricut Joy. But before I do that, I want to just grab another image. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to do a reindeer for my mom's glass, so I'm going to just type in reindeer um, and kind of see if they have any any cute little ones that I think would look nice on the jar. Well, this one my mom would absolutely love. I think she would think it was the cutest little thing in the world, but because there's a lot of white space, um, it wouldn't really be great for a project like this, so I'm going to not be using that one. I'm going to kind of scroll through until I can find one that I think would be the best possible option. I think this one is my favorite one. So I think that's the one that I'm going to use for her. Oh no, this one. I lied. You know what? I'll add both just in case. So I'm going to just resize those as well to be, oops, the height to be 2.5 inches and the height to be 2.5 inches. Um, I'm going to make them all the same color since I'm going to be cutting the stencils all out of the same color. Um, so I'm just going to make them all black and I'll hit apply and then we will go ahead and make it. So I'm going to plug in my Cricut Joy and I'll actually bring it over here for this portion so that it's nice and close to the camera. 
Um, so I'm going to plug the Cricut Joy in. And if you've seen my Cricut Joy video, you know that once you plug the Cricut Joy in, it will automatically turn itself on. After that, I'm then going to select on a mat for my material. And like I said, I have this regular black Cricut removable vinyl. Um, all of the decals will fit on the same mat, so I'm just going to spread them out a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to hit So next. I'll use these little hash marks on the back of the sheet to count out um, four and a half by six, since that's the size of my mat. Um, so each box is a half an inch on the back of the Cricut materials. So one, two, three, four, and four and a half. So now I have my material size to the right size. Um, I'm going to put it onto my mat. So my four and a half by six and a half. So I'll go to my materials. I'll just type in vinyl. Um, the Cricut Joy is a little more um, limited on the vinyl type that you can pick. Um, so I'll probably just wind up going with regular premium vinyl. Um, and then from there, we're just going to load and cut. Um, what I think is pretty cool about the Cricut Joy mat is that it will just load itself automatically. So I'll just slide this in and it will load. Okay, and from there, I'm just going to hit go. And it will cut. So it's done cutting, so I'm just going to unload my material. And that is it for our Cricut portion. So I'm going to unplug this bad boy and put him back over on his, on his little shelf. And we will move on to the next portion. So the next thing that I have to do is just peel my vinyl off my mat. And then I always immediately put my little cover back on because I don't want my mat to become not sticky. So the next step is now to start weeding the vinyl. So I'm going to just take my little weeding tool and kind of just go up from the corner. Um, these kind of cuts weed pretty easy because there's not really that many little pieces. Um, the most difficult part is probably going to be yeah, weeding the antlers. Um, but they should still come up pretty easy. Um, and then we have to go through and weed the insides of the snowman as well as the inside of some of the antlers. I'll always leave my scraps kind of right to the side. So you can see I just peeled up the outside of the images. Um, and now I'm going to just go through and peel up all the insides. Like I said, I'll leave my scraps to the side to kind of use as like a weeding holder for all of my no, no longer needed images. I will just quickly pull up all of those little pieces. I always laugh because when I'm at work and I'm teaching cricket classes, um, I always get patrons that are like, you weed so fast. And I just have to be like, no, I do this like all the time. Um, and that's what the only reason that I'm very fast at it is because I literally do it all the time. I say to them that if you keep practicing and you do the use the cricket and you weed more and more, then um, you'll get better with the weeding part of it. And it makes me laugh because like everyone has like such mixed feelings on weeding. Um, you have people that absolutely love it, um, and then you have people that hate it. Um, I'm one of those people that I love weeding. I think that it is so relaxing um, for the most part, unless I'm doing like super little little tiny intricate things, then I don't love it as much. But I think that it's a, it's like a very relaxing activity. 
for the most part you know like when everything when everything goes right and everything <laughs> peels up nicely um i think it could be like super satisfying so i don't really mind weeding all that much but i definitely know some people that do not find it the least bit enjoyable but since this is garbage now I'm telling you, people tell me all the time that I forget my headphones wasn't attached, and they're probably right. Um, so I forgot to grab transfer tape when I was prepping my list of materials. Um, just like I forgot to grab scissors. Um, so I'm going to cut off a small little piece of transfer tape. This is my all-time favorite transfer tape. It's Craftopia. Um, the only place that I have seen it has been on Amazon. Um, but it just is so good. Um, literally one of my favorite transfer tapes. I bought a 50 foot roll of it because I just love having it. I think I bought two 50 foot rolls of it. Um, it just has such a effortless, easy transfer to other objects. Um, so I think I'm going to do the reindeer first. And I think I like this reindeer better and that's the reindeer with the little like um curved antlers so i'm gonna just transfer this over just like i would any other thing i also forgot a squeegee um but I, the one thing about this transfer tape is that you don't necessarily really need the squeegee um you get a pretty a pretty good transfer over even without it so i'm going to take my little jar and my little vinyl piece and I'm going to just transfer it right over onto my jar. Um, I'll kind of make sure it's centered for the most part. Um, once I have it stuck down I'll rub it on really good with my fingers. Um, make sure that it's kind of fully sealed down across the whole jar. Don't want any of the paint to slip under so I'm gonna just make sure that we're really really stuck down on there so my family is very rustic with our decor um my mom really likes that farmhouse look um like a farmhouse like mountainy look to our stuff um so that's kind of one of the reasons that i like to use the chalk paint is because it gives it that kind of um rustic mountainy look and i think i'm going to use the snowflake snowman for my grandma's jar. Um, she has a very like elegant kind of style. Um, and I think that that's a little more like her speed than the cartoony snowman. The cartoony snowman is more like my style, I think, which is why I was drawn to it. Um, so I transferred over my snowman, take my jar, same process. I'll lay my snowman down. Make sure he's relatively centered. And then just kind of transfer him over with my fingers. And that's kind of it for the first portion of the jars. This is like the cricketing portion of the tutorial on how to do this. Um, so once that's done, I'm just going to peel up my little transfer tape. Um, this transfer tape is great because you can reuse it literally a bunch of times without ever having to worry about it. Um, so I'm actually going to stick it to my little snowman on here um, so that I can save it um, in case I ever want to use that other snowman for a different project. So now what I'm going to do is begin my painting. So I'm going to start with the snowman. Um, then I just put the reindeer to the side. Um, I'm going to shake my paint up. This is a pretty old thing of paint. Um, chalk paint is like pretty, pretty thick. Um, so you really only need one coat of it. I like to take the lid off when I'm painting with it so that I can get my hand inside the jar in order to hold it while I'm painting. So I'm just going to grab a little bit of paint and just start slapping it on there um the one thing that i do suggest when you're doing this project um is that you kind of only do one coat of paint for it 
um, two coats of paint kind of make it a little thick um, where you might have some trouble getting the sticker off. Um, the other thing is that when you're painting, obviously it's a little hard with something like this where you have holes in the actual design. Um, but a good rule of thumb when you're using a stencil like this is that you want to paint from the middle of the sticker out away from the actual edge of the sticker. Um, this kind of just makes sure that you're not going to have that paint be bleeding underneath your sticker. Um, the one thing I like too about the chalk paint is that there's not really a need to prep the glass before you do any of your painting. Um, it kind of just makes it the chalk paint is kind of like pre-prepped in order to be able to um, paint with it right onto the glass, which is, I think is like super nice. Um, and I do find that if you do um, kind of want to go back in for that second coat, it can be a little bit of an issue because it will actually peel up the paint on the jar. And we don't want that. So you want to kind of make sure that you're getting everything really covered on that first coat because the second coat does not go down easy. Um, so you try to do as much as you can um, kind of get the look you want within that first coat. Um, and for me, it kind of works out because I like a more um, rustic look to the jar. So I like when it's a little bit see through. Um, I like when you kind of have that paint is like a little bit imperfect. Um, I feel like it adds a lot of character to the painting, um, to the look of the jar as well. Um, so I think that that kind of works out on a project like this, especially with using the chalk paint. Um, so I'm kind of just applying a generous amount of the paint to the front of the jar, um, making sure I'm really coating around that sticker so that I can get a nice crisp line, um, making sure I'm getting within those little snowflakes as well so that I can make sure that I'm gonna even have those stay behind, um, that there'll be a nice crisp image. And then I'm kind of just pulling that paint out towards around the outside of the jar. So you can see I kind of have a nice thick layering on there and I'm going to now spin a little bit and paint the rest of the jar. You can actually see the image, the other side of the jar a little bit. Um, so like I said, chalk paint, it's a pretty thick paint, so you can kind of, um, you can get a lot of good coverage on that first, first brushing with it. Um, so when I do run this as a program, I usually will bring a, um, like blow dryer down with me to the program, um, since we're kind of limited on time of how long that the patrons are there and how long I can run a class, um, I'll usually bring the hair dryer down with me to kind of speed up the drying process to make sure that the patrons are still able to take their sticker off while they're at the library. Because not everybody has access to a Cricut waiting tool to take the sticker off. So I'm going to just kind of finish painting this jar and then I will rejoin you when I begin to paint the reindeer jar um, and then after that we will let the jars dry a little bit and then we will peel up that sticker and I will show you guys what the finished product looks like with the little the little tea light inside so I will see you guys in a little bit when we finish painting my first jar is done I'm now going to switch over to the brown paint and do the reindeer jar. So I'm just gonna close this up and grab my little bottle of hazelnut paint. We will switch over to the other, painting the other jar. So you can use any sort of resin jar to do this project. Um, it doesn't have to be these ones. I do like these ones from Hobby Lobby because they don't have any writing on the side. They're completely flat all the way around the whole jar. Um, but you can use a regular ball mason jar, or any other type of mason jar that you have. You don't even have to use a mason jar if you have like a, a vase or something like that that you like, um, that you would like to use that for the project instead, you totally could. It could be any type of glass that you have on hand. Um, you could even use, like my mom likes to reuse yogurt jars. We yogurt in like the little glass jar and she'll use that to like remake gnomes and all different stuff like that. 
So it's really just what you have on hand. Um, I just like these specific mason jars because they don't have any of the writing around the side. You can use anything you like. So I'm just opening up the hazelnut paint. And of course, I have to use my little um, tool because I didn't get my finger in there in the jar. Um, so I do find that the chalk paint is kind of a little thinner when it's new. The big jar of uh, plaster chalk paint that I have is kind of an older paint. Um, I've had the bottle for a really long time, so it's starting to get a little bit thick, um, which is fine. I mean, that totally happens with any paint, not just chalk paint. Um, so I kind of might have to um, make sure that I double down on this first coat of chalk paint with the new chalk paint that I bought today um, because it is a little bit on the thinner side. So I'll try to just kind of make the coat really even around the whole jar um, and then I will go from there. So I'm going to, you can see I started covering up the sticker first. Again, working from the inside of the sticker and drawing out away from it um, to kind of make sure that we're keeping those seams really sharp um, and then kind of just building from there. So I will join you guys back once I am done painting the rest of this jar and hopefully by the time that's done the white jar will be done and I'll be ready to peel it up. So I'll see you guys in a little bit again. So jar number two is done. It is completely covered. I do cover the bottom of the jars too. Um, Every once in a while, I will hit it with my finger and have to kind of touch up with just a little bit. Um, so I'm kind of just going to carefully place this down. Um, paint side up, obviously. Um, the white is looking pretty okay. It's starting to dry quite a little bit. So I'm going to just let it dry um, a little bit longer. And then I will come back and we will peel off the sticker. So I waited a couple of minutes. Um, and for the most part, our white jar should be pretty dry, at least dry enough to continue with peeling it off. Um, so that's what I'm going to start doing. So I have my little hook, and if I find that I'm peeling up too much of the paint, what I'll do is I'll kind of go around with an X-Acto knife um, and cut the edges, but I'm not sure if that will happen. So I'm going to kind of just start peeling. So I'll kind of lift a little bit from the edge. Um, this could be a really scary process because you don't want to mess it up. Um, messing it up means kind of a loss on that particular project. Um, it looks like the paint didn't really stick great um, on the snowflakes underneath. Um, I'm going to try and peel up from a different angle and see if that makes a difference. I'll start with the snowman's little arms I'm leaning on some wet spots but that's fine I find that when you have those little wet spots that get kind of picked up a little bit um, it kind of just adds to the character of the jar a little bit gives it more of that rustic feel that rustic look to it um, which I really like so I'm totally fine with a little bit of the jar being still wet while I'm touching it. Oh, that snowflake came out nice. So like I said, I'm just going to kind of peel up super slow. Just going little bit by little bit. around the edge of the jar. So here's kind of where I'm at. You can see I have kind of the top of the snowman is taken off and I will continue to peel. Now is like a big chunk of the snowman. Just kind of move 
really slow. Takes the whole Making sure I'm not really getting too much lifted. That still kind of picks up the arm that I left behind. And that's that. So you can see I have my little snowman with his little snowflakes on him. And I'll hold him up a little closer at the end um, to kind of show you what he looks like. So I'm just going to sit him right back down and kind of keep him upside down still for now. Just to make sure that that bottom's really drying. And the brown is still super wet, so we're going to give that one a couple more minutes. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to kind of clean up a little bit. Um, just make sure that I'm keeping these super dry. I'm going to actually move this over onto my desk so that I can kind of start to clean up just a little bit. Look, Mr. Snowman. I'm going to go wash my paintbrushes and do all that. I told you I'm uber forgetful today. I forgot to mention that I also take a little bit of twine for like a little detail afterwards. And gosh, now that I don't have the table in front of me, you can see how awful my painting outfit is. So I'm going to just check on the brown jar and see how we're doing. We're looking pretty dry. I'm thinking we might be dry enough to peel. Um, I'm a very impatient crafter. I'm the kind of person that's like, I just want to see what it looks like. I'm gonna awkwardly sit with my back to you guys so you can kind of see what it looks like when I'm peeling. <laughs> so you can see I got a little bit of the first part of the leg off. So I'm just gonna go to the next section of the leg. For the, well, for the next leg. Um, and peel that piece off. Nice and easy. And this is a pretty clean painting job, if I do say so myself. You can see it's kind of peeling right up. I'm going to just grab the teal while I'm here. Um, the one tip that I do have for when you're peeling up vinyl is that instead of kind of peeling from the edge where the paint is, um, you want to kind of go from like inside of the vinyl. Um, so I'm not going to peel from the edge. I'm going to go into the actual center of the vinyl and peel up that way. Um, that way I'm not running the risk of chipping the paint while I'm peeling it up. So I'm just going to slowly peel this up. Oh wow, this is such a nice crisp edge on this. Sometimes it just comes out way nicer than you thought it was going to. Kind of like that. So that's that. Let me flip this over so you can see the full effect. It's hard to tell when it's kind of like this exactly what it looks like because you don't have the candle in it obviously so I'm going to grab a candle I'm going to shut the lights off and I'm going to stick the candle inside the jar um so that you guys can get the full effect so I'm going to go grab a candle I'll be right back okay so I have my candle um so I bought these candles at Lidl um and they have a little built-in timer to them um which is something that my family very much values because it could be very frustrating to have to go around and turn the candles on every night um, when you're doing a project or at night when you're, you know, ready to relax. Um, so I'm going to turn the little timer light on and I'm going to sit it inside of our little jar. And even without shutting the lights off, you can already see how nice the uh, image is. I'm going to turn my lights off so you can get the full effect of it. You can see it's a little see-through. It's not the painting's not exactly perfect, but you're still getting a really clear shot of the image itself. So I'm going to switch this now. Slide the candle out. I'm gonna use it as my my guide <laughs> to pick up my other jar, which is the reindeer jar. 
and I'll just drop that candle in and you can get a pretty good shot of what the reindeer looks like too. Um, and again, it's not 100% perfect, but it's not supposed to be 100% perfect. Um, you want to kind of have that very rustic look to it. And you can see how crisp the lines are on this jar, especially with the reindeer itself. And does it look wholly perfect? No, but I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to turn the lights back on. You can still see that you can see the image pretty clearly with the candle behind it. Um, you can also prop it up as well with like coffee beans or something like that inside the jar um, to kind of give it that fully um, high, like you, if you want the candle to be fully behind the image um, to kind of light the whole thing up. Um, so now all I'm going to do, finishing touches on this jar, um, is I'm going to take a piece of twine and I'm going to just wrap it around this top piece of the jar. Um, I kind of wrap it three to four times um, just to kind of give it a little bit of character. So I will wrap that around. Um, nothing super fancy. I'll tie a little knot around the top. Um, and then I'm just gonna cut it with the scissor. And this is just to kind of give it a little bit of flair kind of give it a little bit of character. Flip this around. Sorry if I sound winded. I'm still kind of getting over that cold from my last video. And then I'm just gonna put the lid back on. So I will put, actually, before, before I put the lid back on, let me put the candle back in. So I will put the candle in, right? And then I will put the it on <laughs> as I throw it across the room with the lid on and it's done and that's it and that's how you do a super easy little luminary with a cricket and some mason jars I think actually this one came out a little bit cuter than the other one did um I do love both of them I think that they both came out super cute but I do have a little bit of a soft spot for the snowman I think he came out cute so that's that. Those are the two little Cricut winter luminary jars um, that you can make super easy with just a little bit of vinyl, some paint, and a mason jar. Um, and they come out super cute and they're like a great little um, gift for if you're going to somebody's house for the holidays um, and you want to kind of make something a little personal to the person. Um, that's what I kind of tried to do with these. My grandma um, loves snowmen, so I did a little snowman for her. Um, my mom, our whole living room is brown, um, and she loves reindeer, so reindeer for her. So you can kind of customize these to different needs and what exactly you're looking to do with them. And like I said, you can totally make them for any holiday. It doesn't just have to be for winter or for Christmas. Um, you can easily do a Valentine's Day jar. You can easily do a... Um, Easter jar or 4th of July or whatever you can think of, Thanksgiving, Halloween, anything like that. Um, and they're just a, a super cute little small decoration that you can put out during the holidays. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I hope that you guys, my outfit didn't make you guys feel too sick, my painting outfit. Um, and I hope that you guys will go forth and make your own little luminary jars. So I think that's going to be all from me. I hope you guys enjoyed this little crafty video and have a happy, happy holidays and happy crafting. Mm -hmm.